Okay, welcome back everyone. So today we are gonna go ahead and see what happens in Hastinapura now that Dhritarashtra, Gandhari and Vidura have left. So it's early morning. Yudhishthira has just woken up. He did his morning rituals. He did his puja, arti, got the blessings from all the gods and now he is going to um, his uncle's room to seek their blessings like he does every day. Now when he goes there, they are nowhere to be found. What happened? He wonders. Dhritarashtra and Gandhari are not in their room. It's early in the morning. Where would they be? Then he goes to Vidura's room. Even he is not there. So he has this feeling that something is not right and then he goes to all the rooms and everywhere in every corner of his palace to find his uncles and aunties who are like his parents to him. And they're nowhere to be found and now as he's going to the doorway he sees Sanjaya there who has always been with Ritrashtra and he thinks maybe Sanjaya knows. But when he goes there and he finds out that Sanjaya is as surprised, shocked, and confused as well as him. And then he asks to Sanjaya, where are they? And Sanjaya says, wiping his eyes filled with tears that, I really do not know what happened. They did not tell me that they were planning, what they were planning to do. I have been deceived by them and by Vidura too. They were both very, very saddened and distracted. And at the same time, they see Sage Narada approaching towards them. So they quickly run to Sage Narada and tell them, um, Yudhishthira tells to Sage Narada, please forgive me if I seem to be preoccupied, but I'm greatly, greatly dis well, sorry, I'm greatly upset by the disappearance of my parents. It is up to you now to comfort me and tell me what it all means. And Sage Narada, he says, grieve not you, Dishtara, for anyone. This world is entirely in the hands of the Lord. He is the one who brings people together make them leave together for a while and then part forever. He then gives him an example and listen to this example. This is a really great example. Consider the bullock, he says. The master pierces its nostrils and threads a rope through it. He then loads the back of the animal with the burden it has to carry. The bullock has to move in the direction in which the master pulls the rope and it has to carry the burden the master chooses to place on its back. It has no choice in the matter. Even so, similarly, the man is tied by the ropes whose names are rules of conduct such as Dharma, Brahmacharya and Brahmanya. Propelled by them, Man carries to the home of the Lord the burdens imposed on him. No man is free to do as he likes. When a child plays with the toys, he brings a few of them together. And then he plays them for a while and then separates them as it suits to him. Even so, human beings are brought together in this world and they are parted by the wish of the Lord. Consider the essential truth about the life of every human being. The human body is not permanent, as you already know. And the Atman, the Atma which resides inside this body is imperishable. It is permanent. Consider either way, there is no cause to mourn the disappearance of the elders, says Sage Narada. Do not think that they will be helpless because you are not there to take care of them. Forget this delusion. This body, which is the conglomeration of the five elements, is governed only by time, which is kala. Karma means your actions and svabhava means your nature. 
nothing else is able either to protect it or destroy it. He then says, Yudhishthira, listen to me carefully. The Lord has taken a name and a form and has been born on this earth only to destroy evil. His work is now ended. You will remain on this earth as long as he does. <clears throat> as for your uncles, Dhritarashtra has now reached the ashramas of the rishis. The river Ganga, when she descended on the earth, she divided herself up into seven streams. How many? Seven streams. And that spot is named as Sapta Srotas. Sapta means seven and Srotas means streams. So Sapta Srotas. On the banks of the holy lake, your uncle is now spending his time preparing himself for the life to come. Five days from today, he will find release from this human bondage, meaning he's going to leave this human body. His body, as well as that of his queen Gandhari, will be burnt to ashes in the ashrama. Having witnessed this, your uncle Vidura will travel towards the Tirtha once again, and when he reaches Badrika Ashram, he will also shed his body. Remember now all that I have told you and abandon this grief, Yudhishthira, says sage Narada. Narada now took leave of Pandavas and Yudhishthira consoled himself with the words of wisdom spoken by Narada. So again, what are the lessons you've learned from this? Feel free to comment them in the comment box. But what I feel is a lesson or a takeaway from this story is that God is the one taking care of everyone. So have faith in Lord. Everything is predestined. And if you can change something, you can change that by your karma, your good actions. If you want to strive for one thing in your life, then strive for doing only and only good for everyone and for yourself. Nothing but good. What does that mean for us? Always be honest. Do not ever cheat. Do not say bad words. Be kind to people. Be compassionate. Always listen to your parents. Do the right thing for your siblings. Do the right thing for your parents and the world and the people around you. This is the only thing we need to remember, children. This is going to help you great time when you grow and when you go and strive to succeed in the world outside just do the right thing and you all are very much capable of it so this was our story for today and i'll see you next time until then all of you take care much love to all of you bye bye